And welcome to The Bottom Line, where we unpack the main business and economic stories of the day. Germany, once recognized as an obvious European economic leader, is at a crossroads and now is facing a sink or swim moment when decisions must be made and have to be implemented rather quickly. Volkswagen employees started the working week with warm-up strikes to remind management that the trajectory with potential layoffs and pay cuts isn't the way to go. But the situation with Volkswagen is only a partial manifestation of the broader issues of the crumbling German economy. Today, I welcome Vladimir Vanyo, chief economist of Globes to give us more insight into the deep-reaching German problems. Hello, and thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Good evening. Thank you for your invitation. So today's two-hour periodic strikes at nine Volkswagen car factories, they came as a warning, perhaps a warm-up, but they definitely don't come as a surprise. And there is some hope that the December 9th negotiations might be fruitful, but what are the chances that they actually will be fruitful and that there will be no further escalation to those strikes? Well, let's be honest, the Volkswagen has been undergoing the labor cost cutting initiatives except that up, up till now these initiatives were very friendly this was this very uh, german socially acceptable way of reducing the workforce through early retirements or through voluntary uh, leaves with uh, generous uh, payoffs uh, for the first time in 87th year history of the concern the company is considering closure of the entire plants and that's that's what has triggered uh, this uh, uh, strikes along with complete disagreement between the management and labor unions apparently labor unions did not really catch up with the reality not only of the financials but also with the reality of the market and with a very fast uh, mushrooming uh, inflow of the Chinese competition with which Volkswagen is having and other European uh, incumbent manufacturers are having uh, problems to catch up not only when it comes to the producing uh, interesting competitively priced the cars but especially when it comes to the profit margin so the cars that we see being imported uh, are being produced with uh, uncomparably more generous profit margins, which gives the uh, Chinese competitors significant leeway in further competing with current uh, manufacturers. One additional thing where we focus only on the Volkswagen, the reality is that there is a dozen other either automotive manufacturers or suppliers which are going through a harsh time, including uh, the labor uh, layoffs. Uh, so this this is not the only uh, part of the European automotive industry that's facing this uh, significant but inevitable restructuring, which is again driven by the switch to the uh, electro vehicles and the fast uh, uh, entry of the Chinese uh, Chinese competition. Last but not least, when we look at the Volkswagen, the pictures that we are now being shown are from the Germany. The reality mm -hmm. is Volkswagen is number two car producer worldwide. Only Toyota has overtaken it a year ago. It's still the biggest producer of uh, internal combustion engine uh, cars worldwide. It employs in excess of 600,000 workers worldwide. Well, speaking of Toyota, Half of them actually, are in Germany. Mm -hmm. speaking of Toyota, we had Stefan uh, Reindl, who is head of the German Automotive Association, and he mentioned that Toyota produces as many cars as Volkswagen, maybe a little bit more, but with 50% less employees. So is Volkswagen's problem a matter of efficiency, perhaps what they offer their customers? So are these layoffs inevitable? Absolutely, productivity is by definition a name of the game. As a macroeconomist, I must remind us that the only sustainable way of increasing the living standards, which means increasing uh, 
uh, salaries and wages in a sustainable way is to be able to increase productivity adequately. The comparison with Toyota is a very important one. Another important comparison is with the biggest Chinese manufacturer. So Volkswagen worldwide employs like 9% of its workforce in research and development, roughly around 70,000 uh, researchers, engineers. Actually, its biggest Chinese competitors employs almost twice as much engineers in research and development. So I would argue that it's not about how many people Volkswagen employs, but what's the structure of the workforce. And also, um, let's break down the situation because, and that concerns not only Volkswagen, that concerns most of the, what I would call, European incumbent automotive producers, the old brands. Reality is the Economist has mapped it recently very well. When it comes to Western European factories, one third of those facilities are running at 50% or, or less of the capacity because mm -hmm. of their high cost. So basically, when we look, for example, at the map of the European Union, it's the manufacturers who were quick enough to understand that in order to produce competitively priced quality cars with lower prices, one has to watch his uh, uh, cost base, including labor cost base. And what we see, not only in the case of this uh, concern, also uh, other uh, European manufacturers, those who were quick enough to understand, to establish their presence in Poland, or Hungary, Romania, the eastern flank of the European Union, those factories, basically are running close to the full capacity. It's the Western uh, factories with uncomparably higher cost base, which are facing lower capacity figures, and therefore their fate, either they reinvent themselves with producing um, competitively priced uh, cars with a higher margin that can justify the higher cost, um, or they will just need to follow the fate that we have seen in economic history um, in textile manufacturing, which did start historically in the United Kingdom and the rest is history. Uh, we also need, when it comes to the automotive uh, sector, face the inevitable truth of stark uh, competition, not only from China, also from the US, for automotive also the price of energy is something that plays an important role and the price of energy in Europe is uh, uh, well, significantly higher according to the European Central Bank. Price of energy in Euro European Union is four times as high as uh, United States. So the automotive sector is facing <clears throat> or manufacturing as such is facing some of the common challenges and we have to choose if we tackle these challenges in a principal way or we might see what happened approximately a decade ago when we had so-called uh, photovoltaic panel wars with China which ended up with pretty much or all photovoltaic panels being imported from China and all the local manufacturers going bankrupt that's, uh, but that's opposite extreme of what what we have seen in recent economic history. Of course, and just as we wrap up, I wanted to ask you whether after so many years of established growth, is Germany able to redefine its economy, replace itself in the European context without the dependence of cheap Russian energy, um, perhaps not as uh, the European economic champion? Will it be able to find itself in a different European context and quickly? In important question. And again, I would like to undermine that we are not talking about one of the 27 EU member states. We are talking about economy representing around quarter of the European Union GDP, almost 27% mm -hmm. of the manufacturing output. And we talk about economy, which according to the Global Innovation Index ranks eight worldwide and which provides very important basis for the innovative industry, including the human resource, including the uh, educational infrastructure uh, with some of the number one uh, technical universities 
uh, being based in the Germany. So I wouldn't say it's all doom and gloom. It, it just needs to be sorted out. What is the heritage problem uh, associated with inevitable restructuring of the economy as it has happened previously? Uh, and where are the competitive edges which we can have? Uh, also, one important thing, Germany is uh, facing a strong wake-up call ahead of the upcoming uh, election to recognize where German policymaking of the past decade has made some of the grave mistakes. And mm -hmm. here I refer especially to uh, its energy policy and also the uh, German voice on the European, on the EU level with the new European Commission uh, will be important. Basically, when we look at the workers from this particular concerns, these are the workers who produce very competitively priced and very competitive uh, ICE, internal combustion engine, uh, out, uh, cars. It's just that the, we ourselves in the European Commission have imposed on ourselves this hard limit that within 2035, we don't want to see any of this type of products okay. on our streets. We're going to have to, we're gonna have to park our conversation there. Vladimir, it's been great having you. Thank you so much for joining us and for your insight there. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you. And that was Vladimir Vanyo of Globesite. Thanks so much for joining us today. I was your host, Marie Cato. Join us again tomorrow for Business Arena at 5 p.m. CET on TVP World. Goodbye.